Hi, and a very warm welcome to Mama of Many today. I just pray that the Holy Spirit will have only the Lord's way and say through my heart and life today and that the Lord will touch you. The Lord is going to heal you every way you hurt. The Lord is going to, where you've been feeling distracted, where you've been feeling pain, where you've been feeling disillusionment, disappointment, the Lord is literally going to come with the winds of the Holy Spirit. He's going to blow all of that away today in Jesus' mighty name. He's going to make new. He's going to refresh you. He's going to revive you today. I have been sharing about uh, from Ezekiel 37 and the dry bones and the importance of how we see in the, the scriptures. It took all the four winds of heaven to blow as the Holy Spirit came in order to raise up to life again, those very, very dry bones. It looked desperate, it looked hopeless. And you may have gone through times in your life, you may be facing circumstances in your life that look desperate and that look hopeless. And it's gonna take the four winds. We've been speaking and sharing about what those four winds represent. And I shouldn't be surprised that as I'm ministering and I'm speaking out God's prophetic word, that then I literally encountered the full force of those four winds of heaven in my own life. It took me by surprise just last Saturday. It was Mother's Day weekend. It's going to be Mother's Day on the Sunday. I was enjoying a wonderful Saturday morning with all of my kids around and before we were hitting sports that afternoon. And my son eldest was home for, for the weekend from London. We'd been having a wonderful time together, but I was feeling this restlessness in my spirit. Have you ever experienced that? This nudge that the Lord was just drawing me uh, to himself, to his presence. And when the moment came that they were tucking away and all the boys were, were playing a game, I hid away actually in here where I'm ministering this word from today to just spend a few moments and pray and read God's word. But as I did, a friend of mine had sent through on WhatsApp, a, a very close heartbeat of mine, a message and this song. And I thought, well, I'll just play this worship song that she'd sent me, a very trusted friend. And as I did, literally, I felt the Holy Spirit right here just come mightily upon me and I burst. I completely broke in his presence. And the Lord began to speak to me. The Lord began to bring things to the surface in me that I didn't realize was there. Some things to the surface that I had thought, you know, I would just face that, that the hurt of that. And I would be dealing with that. You walk in forgiveness, don't you, when you face situations, but you feel like you can't always forget and the Lord reminded me in that moment, as you know, the Lord's been speaking to me on Joseph as well. And we were talking about how the children of Israel were called to carry the bones of Joseph into the promised land. So for 40 years, there they were. What was significant about the bones? It's, it's the Lord would have us healed and whole and the Lord would have us carry the essence of all that is foundational, all that is good, um, all that is wholesome for our lives and that can sometimes be made of the healing from the good the bad and the ugly that we face we carry that into the new as the Lord has said to me one time in church will you carry I've called you to carry the old bones into the new with you um, but we do see something in scripture with those old bones as the Lord only showed me this this morning that the uh, you're never to touch the children of Israel uh, it was unclean to touch a dead body or to touch those bones, but yet they were called to carry them for 40 years. We are not to go back and to touch those things that the Lord restores us from. We're not to go back and to regurgitate the, the hurts of the past. We are to forgive. And in those areas in your life where you have maybe felt like, like me, oh, I'm not going to be able to forget that hurt done to me. Maybe it's through church. Maybe it was through leadership. Maybe it's through a relationship. Maybe it was through a marriage. Maybe it's through a, a work situation. Maybe it was through unmet expectations from God as you thought he would come through for you. And you haven't seen that fulfilled in the way that you wanted it to happen. Well, as I sat here in this sofa on this Saturday morning, the winds of the Holy Spirit blew. And I'm going to share with you the encounter that I received and unpack this for you as best I can with my limited ability today. So I just pray that the Holy Spirit, you would come now and you will breathe life on these words and that Lord, this will be life giving to every hearer that I would minister spirit 
to spirit today for deep calls to deep in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So winds of the spirit, there's a storm coming. As I sat here and the Lord brought to the surface so many situations and things and the Lord said, I want you to leave it here. I fell on my knees in front of me here and there's a footstool if you could see it that became my altar and I completely burst it was like the dam within me burst in the presence of the Lord and it was I, the way I saw it in the spirit is I experienced what is like the north wind of the spirit coming what does the north wind represent Ezekiel 1 verse 4 says then I looked and behold, a whirlwind was coming out of the north, a great cloud with raging fire engulfing itself and brightness was all around and radiating out of its mist, midst like the colour of amber out of the midst of the fire. The fire of God comes with the winds of the spirit. And in that north wind, we can, it can sometimes feel like a whirlwind that hits us. It batters, it bombards us, it's powerful. It's a cold wind, the north wind. It brings uh, change and transformation as we shared last time. Ultimately, as I said before succinctly, the north wind, um, it brings the glory of God, the full weight of his presence and the government of God. It brings seasonal change and change to our lives. It rearranges things. In the, the Bible commentaries, a number of Bible scholars, they describe the North as, as being heavenly because it's uh, it comes from, you know, that, that North point from heaven and where the it, one of the commentaries said where the celestial beings come from and angels. So the North wind ultimately it brings the glory, it brings the government of God and how that can apply and how it actually worked out in my life um it was it brought to the surface all that needed god needed to bring change to god needed to bring release to it can be um it can show us that when that north wind comes of the spirit our dire need for jesus our desperateness for jesus it leaves us feeling battered exposed we are real and raw in God's presence and that's exactly how I was completely undone in his presence a holding on only to him my anchor was Christ alone in the storm and my cry was Lord I won't let go until you complete your work in me it felt like God was getting to the very bones of my life and that can hurt and you have been there too where God I believe for his church is getting to the very bones of our life his word is coming to the division even of joint and marrow the scriptures tell us and God is removing what is superficial from our lives so that we can live in his supernatural he is taking us from the natural to to the supernatural realm and with that there comes that complete dying to our flesh life and to our self what's the self life it's the selfish life that we will live the selfless life of Christ the Holy Spirit led life and so in his presence I found that the Lord brought to the surface hurt attitudes wrong attitudes in me my unworthiness um, and yes it hurt as I surrender surrendered all let go that's what the north wind of the spirit does it's causing us to let go and let god as the north wind of god's spirit blows surrender all let go i was left naked and undone and surrendering to jesus the holy one i believe that's like when people realize their dire need of of jesus that they're sinners and they need a savior we're nothing without him just allow that north wind of the spirit to come, but he will not leave you there. Because then, as I experienced on my knees weeping, and as the Lord brought to the surface and showed me all I needed to let go and leave into his hands, and the Lord was saying, I'll take it from here, Christy. You can trust me with your life. Then the east wind comes. So we know on the compass, it goes from north to east, to south, to west. There is a divine cycle of God and the scriptures back this up <laughs> to the hilt today. And I'm just going to be building upon what we've been sharing. Do go back and listen to the last message if you haven't done so already. This one you can hear at this time, but do that you can hear them in any order. But I believe God is just building precept upon precept because I'm not going to repeat stuff necessarily, but I am going to build upon it 
by the power of God's Holy Spirit because he's doing a work in our hearts and lives today as he's teaching us and as he is prophetically leading us in his ways and all that he's doing in our church. This is a powerful word today if you will receive it and you'll open your heart. So then the east wind comes and what did I, I shared last time? It represents scripturally the judgments and the justice of God. We can see that in scripture. Um, I shared examples last time, but one I didn't share just to bring this afresh to you now, Genesis chapter 41, verses 6, 23 and 27, uh, 27 which mention uh, Joseph's interpretation of Pharaoh's dream of the, remember the seven fat and thin cows and then the seven good ears of grain um, and then the, the seven withered ears of grain, which gobbled up the seven fat and good ears of grain and that represented um and it actually says that the withered ears were blasted by the east wind there's a time when the judgments and the justice of god comes to nations comes to lives comes to situations and god where you have been dealt with unjustly 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 whatever way that goes um i want you to know today you can trust in the judgments and in the justice of God. Recompense and reward is yours from the Lord. Um, God says in his word, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. When those have hurt you, whether it's whatever direction that hurt or pain has come from, we need to surrender all of that to the Lord. And then we need to walk in forgiveness. It is so key. And I'll tell you why, because the Lord, he will now expose the enemy. And as we forgive and we let all expectations from others go, that's what happens when the east wind blows. You will find that your expectation will now be found completely in the Lord. Those who wronged you, those who um, didn't treat you as you should have been treated, those who should have known better perhaps, those who misunderstood you and if that's been you we can all you know we none of us are perfect we're all human and um, where we have been that to other people we must repent too and ask by the power of the holy spirit we're going to do better next time that we're going to live as children of light and children who just radiate god's light and love for each other and for others through our lives um so god wants us for those who've wronged us to not be seeking them to repay. They can't let them go, release it to Jesus. The only one who can repay is the Lord. And the Lord promises his compensation system, I've said many times, and I'll keep saying it, <laughs> is double for trouble, sevenfold return for everything that's been stolen from you and a hundredfold back for everything that has been given up to God in this life. And God will restore that to you in this life, not just waiting for it whenever you get to your heavenly reward. That's the word of the Lord. Jesus promised that himself. The Lord is your defense. And I sense him say that after the winds of war, after the battle zone, when the north wind has battled and it's blown and it feels so harsh, bitter and cold, that then his justice and his judgments blow in on the east wind. After these things, then the Lord comes and he will you can trust his justice, you can trust his judgments. And it's so important that we give all the, the hurts that even others have caused to the Lord and we walk in forgiveness because as we do that, we when we release others to, to the Lord, then the Lord releases them, that their release, as we're praying for them to be released, that will be our release too because we're going to find that the Lord will bring change to their lives. God says to pray for those who wrongly treat you. And as we pray for them, and as God then works in their lives, as we, God, we're told to bless them, as we bless them, that God just pours in his love, God showers them with his blessing. And as we trust God to bring change there, then that ultimately is going to bring blessing and change to us. And we must look to the Lord, the Lord will be your defense. And after these things, I hear the Lord saying, just like was said to Abraham, after these things, he'll be your shield, your defender, your justice, your protection. He'll be heaven's compensation. Genesis 15, 1, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. 
saying, fear not, Abraham, I am your shield. I'm your defence. I'm the one who'll defend you, defend you against those who've maybe mistreated you, misunderstood you. I'm the one. Trust it all into my hands. Forgive those as I forgive you. Release them. And that will ultimately be the release for you too. Let me trust it all into my hands and into my plans. And then let my miraculous power work in your midst. I am your shield. I'm your abundant compensation. There it is. God's promise in his word. And I am your exceedingly great reward. Look at the over top, the top language that God has. He is excessive in his love for you. He will be excessive in his repayment for you. Don't be looking to that husband to repay you for how he's hurt you. Um, your repay, that person who has hurt you cannot repay what they have done many a time. It's too much. But the Lord can. You can trust the Lord to repay and to restore as part of his compensation plan. He is the one with all the riches. Let's not be expecting from other people what they cannot give, but let's forgive and let's release and let's love others into God's perfect plan for them, which release us into his perfect plan and his hands for our lives too. Does that make sense to you today? I hope and pray it does because it's so real and it's so prevalent for me and it's the key to really living free above it all, above every attack of the enemy. Because remember something that is very key in the judgments and in the justice of God. We are told in the word of the Lord that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers. Our battle is never to be with personalities, but our battle is with the principalities. We are called to love as Christ loves. We are called to pray and to believe the best for everyone, even our, the worst enemy that you can think of. And whenever we do that, then we will truly live free in Jesus' mighty name. I'm not downplaying the hurt and the heartache and the heartbreak. I know that many of you have been through, through that um, but we can trust all into God's ultimate justice and into his judgments. I love the justice. I love the judgments of God. David, whenever um, a plague was being poured out on Israel because of their sin, he cried out to God and his cry was, Lord, don't let us fall into the hands of man. I never want to fall into hands the hands of men. I don't want to fall into the hands of medics. I don't want to fall into the hands of um, people who are fallible, but I want to fall into the hands of an infallible and a merciful God because David knew that. And he said, because God is merciful. And he just cried that and he knew that God ultimately is good. So he wanted God's judgments and God's justice for his life. May it be the same for us too in Jesus mighty name. We can see here that um, in Isaiah chapter nine, it speaks of, and I believe this is a prophetic word for God's church right now, that the Lord, we see in Psalm 23, that God's rod and his staff, they comfort me. He prepares a table before us in the presence of any every enemy. The staff was always to be used um, to, our staff is Jesus to lean on. The staff was always to, to be used to um, bless and to help and to lead help lead the sheep. The rod was to be used not ever against the sheep, but the, the rod was always to be used by the shepherd against the enemy who would come to attack the sheep. Know that God is not there with a rod to beat you. God is there to love you, to lead you, to guide you, to bring you to good pasture for your life, to bring you to the best life, to bring you to great blessing um, and great flourishing and fulfillment. And the rod is there to be used against anything that would come and attack one of Christ's own. And we see here, I'm taking this a step further and giving you a bit of revelation today because it says in Isaiah 9, 1, uh, verse 4, for you, this is God's prophetic word. And I believe we're living in this day and it's a word for his church right now. For you will break the yoke of their slavery. Where God's church, where his people have been struggling and striving, where you've been carrying that heavy burden of expectation, whether it's from um, church, whether it's from leaders, whether it's from expect wrong expectations you put on yourself, whether it's from a spouse, God wants, well, let's see what his word says. Jesus says his yoke is easy, his burden is light. It says, for you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. 
I believe that there's a remnant rising. There is a people rising who are not going to be hindered or shackled down with the yokes or with the bondages of man, but we are going to live free as Christ intended us to be in Jesus name, that we're going to be the remnant rising, his church rising in love, his church rising in shepherding, in leading, his church rising in that fivefold, embracing all the apostolic, the prophetic, the teacher, the evangelist, the pastor, all in place, all flowing together by the power of his grace, because Jesus is doing a beautiful end time work in his church and he is glorifying and, and purifying and getting ready his beautiful bride, which is his church. And as such, we've seen how he's been breaking off the wrong um, leadings of man, the wrong burdens that man can put on people. And he is wanting people to lean in to his word and to live free in Jesus mighty name. And look at the leadership that God is orchestrating in his judgments and in his justice. It goes on and it says, for a child is born to us, verse six, speaking of Jesus, the coming of Jesus. And he's, he's come. This was prophesying his leadership that is now at work in his church and on the earth. For to us, a child is born, a son is given. The government will rest on his shoulders. And Jesus, he will be called Yeshua. <laughs> he will be called Wonderful. He's the counsellor. He's the mighty God. He's the everlasting father. He's the prince of peace. He doesn't come to bring heavy weights. He doesn't come to bring wrong expectations. He doesn't come with that rod or with that whip to beat you so that you, you work yourself to the bone. Oh no, he comes to release you from every weight and wrong burden that you have been bearing. And it says his government and peace will never end. Will you receive that? Oh, church, will you receive his government and peace? Not the ways, not the methodologies, not the strategies of man, but the vision given to man by God, which will always be freeing, which will always be releasing, which will always be bringing ease. If you find that you are um, weighed down, then you can be sure you are not carrying what the Lord Jesus would have you carry over your life. And the Lord wants you to break that off you today by the power of his word in Jesus name. The government and his peace will never end. He will rule with fairness. This is beautiful. This is the leadership of Jesus. And he wants us just as he is the ultimate leader and pastor of the sheep. If you're called pastorally in every in any area of your life, whether it's business, whether it's in church, whether it's work, where we're to let us be leading people as we're the little peas. He's the big P, the big pastor of his sheep and of his flock that he, we will also rule like Jesus with fairness and justice from the throne. Um, and it says the passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. There's a new day dawning for his church right now. Can you hear the call to freedom? Can you hear the sound of liberty? Can you hear the voice of love and nurturing coming around? And I just sense as well, just as one of the tribes, there was 12 tribes in Israel, and as God led them through the, the wilderness for 40 years, one of the tribes was called to actually be the rear guard that were going back for those straggling sheep, for those sheep that had fallen behind. Maybe you felt like that. You've been straggling. You've been left behind. You've been hurt by man. Your gift hasn't been recognized. Well, I'm coming with the words of the Lord today as that rear guard. I'm coming as that shepherd of, with his word today to, to gather you in, to gather you up and to say, oh, come close to the master today. He has good, he has flourishing, he has treasures to bring your way. He has his healing oil to pour in. That Psalm 23 says, he anoints my head with oil. That oil that the shepherd used was to bring healing. At the end of the day, the shepherd would get his oil out. And if the she any of the, the lambs or the sheep had maybe um, been hurt in any way, pour in that oil on the sheep and fresh anointing today over your life in Jesus name. It's the anointing of the Lord that will break off every bondage that has been placed wrongly upon you so that you child of God break free, go free today.
in Jesus' name. I'm actually sharing a lot today I didn't even intend to say, so I just know that the Holy Spirit is having the Holy Spirit's way. God's judgments and his justice that comes in with that east wind. And as I received that on my knees in his presence, as I trusted all that had been unjust, maybe through the years, as I just gave it all up to the Lord, well then, something amazingly amazing happened. I received such a reward because the scriptures actually show us that after the um, so after the east wind comes with the, the judgments and the justice of God. So we've had the north wind, which is powerful. It's battering. It's breaking down all of our resistance. Um, and then it comes the judgments and the justice on the east wind. Well, we need a little bit of reprieve, don't we? And then comes the south wind and that south wind oh what does that bring it's beautiful the word of the lord shows us that the south wind brings that soothing it says in psalm 78 verse 26 he caused caused an east wind to blow in the heaven and then by his power he blew in the south wind because God knew how much we were going to need it. I needed that on my knees. And literally when that warm, the south wind is a warm wind. It's the warm wind of the spirit. And as that blew in, I simply soaked up the sun, the S-O-N. I was soaking up his presence. My crying, my hyperventilating, it began to cease. There was the odd <laughs> coming from me in that moment on my knees. And I found complete rest in him. Actually, as all this was happening, I could hear at, at times um, a child came to one of the, the children came to the door and they just thought, oh, obviously, it's the norm in our house. Oh, mummy's having a moment. She's on her knees with the Lord. And they walked away. I think husband, as I, my wonderful hubby came up at one point and I was sharing with him afterwards all that the Lord um, spoke into me. And then obviously some of this he has processed with me through my all nighter, <laughs> my evening tea with Jesus and me. Um, so that warm south wind of the spirit, I found complete calm, peace, relief and release. The crying ceased and I just wanted to stay there forever. That's what the, when you just open yourself up to the Holy Spirit blowing in your life, the Lord will bring you to that place. It's so important, all the four winds of God, because they all have a place. All of those four functions of the Holy Spirit in our life, that work of ultimate change, transformation, revival and grace in our hearts, in our lives and for his church at this time. As I sat and I knelt in his presence, all else faded away. I knew it was a new day. He'd made all things new. I was instantly healed and whole. I was ready for that west wind to blow oh but as I just soaked up that south wind as I said last time it represents the revival the renewal and the peace oh it was so beautiful to receive that and I just sense the Lord pouring that into you today in Jesus name the four winds are so vital do you know as my hubby he actually said to me when I was sharing this with him he saw a picture of somebody standing and if the north wind just the north wind comes with a mighty force it will blow you out and take you out but when you receive all the four winds of the spirit the north east south it brings and west it brings a divine order it brings balance it brings a stability because the word of god says having done all stand and i believe the only way we're going to stand in these days is on the authority of god's word and in the power of the holy spirit and the lord is teaching us on the four winds of the holy spirit working in our lives working in his church at this time there's the fruits of the spirit this is the era of the holy spirit beautiful friends there's the gifts of the holy spirit there's the four winds of the spirit and the lord is really preparing us for all that is going to come so that we're going to stand strong so after me soaking up all of that wonderful like being in a holiday mode after the <laughs> the full-on bombardment of what had gone before in his presence i then just experienced that beautiful south wind that led to the west wind and what does the west wind represent it's only mentioned once in the scriptures and in the scriptures we see that um, it was when the west wind, I shared it last time, when the west winds blew, um, it actually the east wind had blown in 
as part of the 10 plagues that Moses brought about in judgment on Egypt and Pharaoh in order to let God's people go, the east wind blew in the judgment of all of the locusts about the seventh plague in, um, in Exodus. And then it was the west wind that came and it blew at the word of the Lord whenever Pharaoh um, recanted and he, he repented. Repentance, as I said last time, is an amazing uh, warfare key to our complete victory because that west wind came and blew all of the enemy and the locusts out to sea and literally as I sat there and as I rested in his presence the west wind of the Holy Spirit blew and blasted all of the enemy all that the enemy had intended against me and to destroy me every strategy of darkness every curse every negative label every generational curse every blockage burst the dam it is double portion time in jesus name every hindrance and every generational weakness that's what a curse is a curse brings weakness the blessing of the lord makes rich it brings strength into every area of our lives and adds no sorrow with it the curse brings sorrow the opposite is the blessing god is releasing in his west wind, he is blowing away all of the works of darkness and the enemy so that with the west wind, he can bring in all of the blessings and fruitfulness that the Lord has for us in this day. The spirit of the Lord brought complete freedom, liberty from the enemy that was too strong for me. And that's what the Lord will do for you as you surrender in his presence and you allow the winds of the spirit of God to blow in and through your life and through his beautiful church, his beautiful bride at this time. The four winds of the Holy Spirit that are blowing so powerfully today. And as I experienced the full force in my life on my knees, as I'm sure I've experienced many times before in my life, but now the Lord is bringing language to through the power and the authority of his word. I love the four winds, the number four in Hebrew it actually means authority. Oh, the full force of the authority of God is coming to his church at this time. And it's our time to rise and shine in his power and in his might. And just as I was then on my knees and I experienced that west wind blowing, that which I felt was so painful in my life that I wouldn't be able to forget. Maybe you've been there too. I realized that the wind, that west wind of the Holy Spirit just blows everything away and we go completely free that which you think you cannot forget just think of Joseph Joseph who was mistreated who was misunderstood who was thrown into a pit by his brothers those who should have known better and then sold probably one of the earliest cases of child trafficking uh, shown there in Genesis he was sold as a slave and then in Egypt the Lord took him from the prison to the palace. He became number two and prime minister in the land. And there he was the one who, when the brothers came and stood before him years on, they didn't recognize all that he had become. The Lord had done such a work in his life. Do you know the Lord wants to say through your suffering, through the trials, through the testing times, the Lord is doing a great work of transformation in your heart and in your life and in your character by the power of the Holy Spirit. And as the Lord did in Joseph, the Lord wants to do in you too, that he was able to look at his brothers and he was able to say to them whenever they thought he would have been coming at them with revenge instead he was able to come to them with forgiveness and with total love and embrace them and give the best and the bless the blessings of God to them through his life and the Lord would have us by his Holy Spirit do and be just like Joseph as Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered so Joseph did too and so do we whenever we allow our brokenness to become our openness to heaven and so I sense just as the west wind of the spirit as I was on my knees came to me and just blew literally away any of those hurts anything that I would have thought you wouldn't be able to forget Joseph he had his firstborn son in Egypt he named Manasseh what does Manasseh mean it means to forget God will cause me to forget God brought great joy his way and the Lord will do the same for you today through the power of the Holy Spirit in Joseph's life. The winds of the Spirit are blowing again and are blowing away 
all that you think that you would be reminded of. No more triggers, the Lord would say. You're going to trigger the triggers going forward. You're going to get ahead of the enemy for the Lord has made you the head and not the tail. And I sense that the Lord, just as then Joseph's second born son was named Ephraim. What does that mean? Fruitfulness. The Lord will bring great fruitfulness as by the power of the Holy Spirit, all of your sufferings, the word of God says, will be nothing to be compared with the glory that will be revealed. That just as a woman in child, when she brings forth a child, she forgets the pain that she went through because of the gain. That's what the Lord is going to do in your life too. I prophesy it over you in Jesus' mighty name. So wrapping up, I was reminded of a vision that the Lord gave me some time ago that is so prevalent for the here and now. I saw a soldier dressed in army gear and there he was in the midst of the fire and he was, he was swirling as there was a whirlwind and I sensed that the, that's the wind of the Spirit of God and the very fire of his spirit upon his church. And as I looked, the army clothes before my eyes, I watched this soldier and this warrior that was transformed before me into a beautiful, glorious bride dressed in the most beautiful and brilliant white and I just sense that the Lord is saying for his church, oh, the flames you've been through and the storms that you have been through. The, it feels like you have been that warrior, but you are his warrior bride. And we read a very obscure verse in Isaiah 9, back to Isaiah 9 again. And in verse 4, it says, uh, sorry, verse 5, the boots of the warrior and the uniforms bloodstained by war will all be burned. They will be fuel for the fire. Do you know you've been wearing that rugged army gear? You've been in the battle zone, but all of that, all of the highs and lows, all of the good, the bad and the ugly, everything that the enemy has meant and charged against you, the Lord is going to use that as fuel in the flame for you, for he is purifying, he is beautifying his bride and the wind of the spirit and the fire of God is swirling into this mighty whirlwind, those four winds of God. And what I saw before my eyes was this beautiful, glorious bride. Then as it got faster and faster, the winds in the fire and in the flame went up. And I sense that's a picture of Jesus preparing his bride. The bridegroom is coming for his own and it won't be long and the Lord is making us ready. This is the era, this is the time of the Holy Spirit and the winds of the Spirit are blowing again. The fire of God is blazing and he is setting his church ablaze for the glory of his name. Open your life today to the fullness of the Holy Spirit, to the fullness of God, to the four winds of his Spirit that are blowing and God is going to do a fresh and a new work of revival in your heart and in your life and bring transformational change today. In Jesus' name, let's pray. Father, we open our hearts to your word right now. We thank you for the full force of your Holy Spirit. Come upon us, we pray. Clothe us in your power as you came upon your church at Pentecost. Come upon your children. Come upon your church in double portion power in this hour. And we pray, Lord Jesus, set us ablaze for you in these days for the glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we love you, Lord. Amen. God bless you today. Till next time.